Hey everyone, welcome back to another lesson here on the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about the Amazon FBA private label product research tool that finds me a $10,000 a month product every time I use it. Seriously, people saying they can't find products, just do this. I mean, if you, if you do what I do, we'll find something in this video. So let's get into it. If that sounds like something you're interested in watching, be sure to stick around to the end. Be sure to like and subscribe if you happen to be new. But without further ado, let's get right into it. So we're gonna move over into my computer here and this is the tool, right? Um, Opportunity Finder, I wanna just jump right into it and start using the thing. Don't need to talk much more. So we're gonna put in some criteria here. Um, we're just gonna go to some of my favorite categories. Now you feel free to use whatever categories you want. Um, there's no wrong way of doing this. I mean, maybe if you want movies and music, that's probably the wrong way to do it. But other than that, there really isn't a wrong way to do it. I'm, I'm gonna set it up something like this. I tend to like um, home decor, home items, kitchen and dining, stuff like that. We'll select that. Now, monthly units sold, maybe you've seen me use this tool before. I just wanna reiterate the fact, cause I was doing product research today, specifically I was, I was actually talking to one of my students and they were having this very problem. They're like, you know, I just, I don't think I'm good at finding products. I don't think I can find anything. And literally we, I was like, all right, let's just do it together. So we opened up this tool, which I always go to. I just said, hey, hey, here's how I'm gonna do it. Here's how I always do it. Let me show you how, right how I do it. And literally they walked away from that call with a product idea and then we found something that very instant. And I, whenever I come here now, I haven't been doing a lot of product research lately because I've been scaling the market that I'm already in. So I don't have to like keep looking for new products. I'm just launching more variations of what I'm already selling. Um, but once you do this, if you do it right, it works so well. So I want to be, I want to see that my competitors are selling maybe 400 to a thousand plus units per month. If my competitors, you know, depending on the price are only selling 200 or 150 and that was my goal, uh, it makes it a little bit harder. If I only have to hit half the sales of my competitors, that's a little bit more likely, more customers as well. So average monthly price. Now I tend to like to sell things over $20. Um, I used to be okay with selling a little bit cheaper things, but it's just, I find so many good products in that $34.99 to like $54.99 range. That's like my favorite area probably. And I'm even venturing up into $64.99, $74.99. Uh, not to mention you usually are gonna be making more per unit and you don't have to sell as many to make the same amount of money. So it's a win-win. However, 100 plus, you might see things that are $500, $600. So maybe we'll just pull that down to you know $89 or something. Um, if you can afford to you know launch something that's $90, go for it. Start looking there because there's gonna be a lower barrier to entry for sure. Um, now, monthly search volume. I'm actually okay with about 1,000 searches per month. Now, what I don't wanna see is 50,000 searches per month or even 20,000 searches per month. Usually if there's that many customers looking for something, it's already being delivered and it's probably being delivered quite well. And if you've been following along my journey at all, you know that I like to sell things where the competitors are not really living up to a high standard. So I can come in as the high standard and set a new standard and the customers see that I'm clearly the option to go with. But when everyone's already on that level, they're already all quite professional looking, it's it's not so much of a you know an easy thing to stand out with because everyone looks that way so if you just put up another great listing that's just the equivalent of a mediocre listing anywhere else so we're going to drag this down to right around 10,000 i think my favorite range for search volume is probably about 1000 to maybe 4000 I'm okay with seeing things that have six, seven, eight, nine thousand because I have seen products that have seven, eight, nine thousand where there's still less than you know 10, 15 sellers selling the product. Um, so we'll move over to competition. This one I'm not too crazy about being strict with. Um, I usually just go medium, just right in the middle because uh, I've been a long time um, out speaker against the scores in generalizing products. Oh, this product's a three, says Jungle Scout, or it's a two star, says Helium 10. I just, I don't care. Those 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 are so off-putting, and it's one of, the, one of the worst inventions I've ever seen. The, the competition thing, low, medium, it doesn't really, it's not super intelligent because there's so many different products that could be ranking for one search term that Maybe five of them are right and the other 55 on page one are not even the right products, but it's counting those as competition. So you see them there saying there, we'll just drop that right in the middle. Same thing with niche score. The score, I don't care. Um, whatever you think the score is, I have my own list of criteria that I'm gonna be judging products on and I'll come up with my own score. So we'll go ahead and we'll hit 
OK or search, whatever that button said before we hit it. Now it's spinning. And then this is going to give us a list of keywords. So this actually does step one of my process for me. Now, if we look in here, this is actually going to be sorted by tens downward. I want to sort this the other way. So I want to actually look at the score sorted backwards. Ironically, I tend to like the products that are fives far more than tens. That goes to prove my point. I was talking about that score not being very a good thing to go off of. So we're actually going to look through here and we want to just look for products that there's a descriptor word in it. So it points to a product, not to a market as a whole. That makes sense. It's, it's a specific thing that we can go measure up. Are they getting this specific thing? For instance, Halloween yard decorations, that's not a product, that's a group of products, right? It could be spider webs, it could be um, spiders, it could be whatever, bats, hanging bats. Those are all decorations and they're all yard decorations. So that's not leading us to a specific product. It is August. It's probably a great time to start thinking about Halloween decorations as a product if you were to do one. Um, so you could click on that and that might be something that yields some fruit. If you, you, you get it in September, hey, sell the hell out of that in October and just shoot for you know one order and a high ROI. So we'll move on down the list and we're gonna go check out if we have any other good options. So I'll actually check back in with you once, uh, once I find something. Okay, so I've just come across something literally 30 seconds after I said I'll check back in with you. Um, it's called Fairy Garden Fairies. Now this reminds me of something that um, was once a good product that I found that was in the same niche um, that I put out on my monthly products list that I uh, release. Um, now. Let's go check this out. So fairy garden fairies, it's very specific, right? Um, so you can think of this like a garden gnome, right? Um, some people decorate with like little fairies, okay? This is like a good op, uh, good version of that. Like it's a, they're sitting on a log, you put that on your garden, it's cutesy, okay, good. So we're gonna look through here and all that I wanna do first is I just wanna see, get a good feel for what exists on this page. Um, so there's the individual fairies. Some of them are far more toy-like and some of them are far more statue-like. Um, I'd imagine these are the ones that people are referring to for their gardens. Um, this says fairy garden fairies. So I'm thinking much more of this style here. And we have people doing all sorts of things with these. Um, so there's some with pools, some with some you know, other characters, the dog. And now we start to get a relevant kind of quickly, you start to get a lot more things blending in because there's not enough results just to make a whole page out of them. And um, they're not selling enough or they're not high enough quality to actually get on the page. So as we look through here, I start to get a good idea of what this product actually is. Now I have to see what the quality of these competitors are like. So if we were to go to like, say the first, let's do this. So the first set, um, these are actually like Disney characters, I think or Pixar, yeah, Pixar, right? Um, says it in the title, I think, um, but we can't do those. We'll, we'll go down to the next one. So here we go. Here's the first one, this is like Fairy Garden, it has the keywords in the title, uh, Fairy Garden Camping Kit, okay. Let's look at the quality of their listing. I just wanna get a feel for who am I going up against here? So they have 100 reviews. Um, I don't, oh my God, okay. So the listings are very bad, right? This is, this is not a good listing by any means. This is just someone who literally sourced this probably has, uh, you know, some basic amateur photography. They just like put their box out in their yard and then they put the things in front of it. A lot of that actually looks Photoshopped. So bad listing score from me personally, right away. I would say this is not a 9.7. Like I said, the scores kill me. Um, the, the quality of the pictures are horrible. So, why don't we go back and now what I need is proof of concept, right? So I, I wanna see that there's sellers selling this product successfully. So I wanna see that they're making, you know, um, several thousand dollars or several hundred sales per month. So let's go take a look. Um, right off the bat, I get caught with this one. They're doing 12,000 and everything else is not doing super good. And I think I have an idea of why that is, okay? When is gardening popular? Well, pretty much like March or April through about July. Now we're getting into the fall. So this is probably a highly seasonal product. I would almost guarantee if we went to this listing, right, the one we were criticizing right here, well, they're doing 8,000, which isn't bad. I bet you they're doing a lot better in the spring and the early summer. They're probably doing worse now. Let's go check. 
They actually went out of stock in May. They went out of stock in April. They came back in stock immediately, went out of stock again. They just came back in stock and they're selling again. So yeah, they, they weren't prepared for the sales that they got, it looks like in April and May. And they actually spent most of the summer, it's a shame, uh, out of stock because they probably would have done really good during that time. So um, teach you a little lesson about inventory management. So what I would do is I would come back to this tool and I'm gonna keep looking. That was a good example of analyzing a market, but let's go find something a little better. All right, we're back. So I actually just looked for a little while. I went through a couple pages here and I actually just found something that I think is pretty funny. Now I normally, uh, we're gonna keep this PG friendly, but I normally don't like tapestries or anything that has to do with art because there's such a subjective nature to it. One person can like one thing, another one might not. But this I think is a little bit different. I don't know what kind of trend this is or where this came about, but there are over a thousand customers every month looking for this product. And what we're seeing here is amazing. So as we look through here, already by the third row down, we have quite irrelevant things coming in. And I want you to notice these are all just repeat Alibaba products, all these pimp, uh, pink ones here, <laughs> all these pimps, all these pink ones here. Um, and then we have a bunch of completely irrelevant results down here and Dumb and Dumber the movie for rent, and then far more relevant results and things as random as tablecloths. So there's clearly a really lack of competition. We can't even fill up a top couple of rows with the right product. Now, let's look how they're doing. So as far as reviews under 75, we've annihilated that. So this one is not correct, and if we get rid of that, the review count is ridiculous. If we go by revenue, that's not the right product. A lot of these aren't even the right product. So there's one, okay, perfect. So we have one with 72 reviews doing 30,000 in sales. Let's look at the listing. One picture. So one picture. I can't believe this. This is if I'm sure if we search this on Alibaba, this is just the picture that they have and that's it. So how long have they been selling? They've actually been selling since November of 2019 and it looks like they actually have stock issues they've gone out of stock or their listing's been inactive several times looks like they come in stock and they just sell really well and they go out of stock again so they have a history of selling really well Thirty thousand per month and then the next one that's even selling the right thing it's like the same listing but they have three pictures and they're doing five thousand per month they actually have a higher price i guess they're charging an extra dollar per picture <laughs> um so that's about it. Uh, the blue clearly isn't on theme with I think who the target audience is. I'm not even quite sure who the target audience is. But all we'd have to do here is imagine even introducing the same tapestry but with a level of branding in which you can see the packaging. You get seven really high quality pictures. Um, that probably would be like a me too product so I wouldn't do that. But what if we can have a artist redesign the tapestry for us we could even keep the saying the same, but maybe look up the best size for these tapestries or target this customer in a way that's, you're getting the same joke and the same, if this even is a joke, but with a different design, a different color, maybe stay within the pink range where we do a different, um, like I said, a different design on it. That would be kind of smart because I know these products are quite cheap. These aren't too expensive and it could be, even right now with the 200 limit, something you could really test with 200. Um, go get the good packaging, get the good high quality photos. And this is one of those things where I wouldn't take it too seriously, but look at what they've done. They've done 30,000 in sales. And guys, Helium 10 and Jungle Scout have both been very low for me consistently. My Shelf sells about 14,000 per month, about 13.6K for the last 30 days. And it's saying it's making like seven or 9,000. So I, if they're doing, if that's happening across the board, they're doing more than 30,000 in sales with this product. 26,000, 28,000, what was it? 28,000? 28,000 in sales with 72 reviews in zero competition. So these are the kind of things you find looking through here, right? I don't know how to come up with this stuff on myself, lack wall shelfing, what is that? I just keep finding things that I wanna click on. Is that supposed to be black lack wall shelf unit? What does that mean? I don't know, maybe it's a brand? But anyway, as I look through here, I, I get almost all my ideas here now. 
So I continue to look, even though I'm focused on scaling the products I have already, but have some fun with this, okay? Maybe this isn't the perfect example of something. It's a little bit trendy. It's something that you, you, you know, probably can't build a whole brand around or keep taking it over, but look at the numbers, okay? The data's there, two people with a 25 to 72 reviews have listed it. If, if they have five stars, they're in this price range, they're making 30,000 a month with one. The other one's doing five, just riding this one's coattails. And that's why I said, don't just do the same thing again, because that's just a me too product. But if you figure out the, the phrase and where this originated from, and you can make a design that looks better than how this is, even changing the font, okay, there's something that you could roll with. So keep looking. If you don't have this tool already, there is a link down in the description where you can get a discount for it. But yeah, that is an interesting product. All right, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I think we're gonna wrap it up right there. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a great weekend. I'll see you here on Monday for another video. Thanks so much, later.